Okay. I'm Laura Trapp. I have a blog, The Trap Librarian, and that's actually what I'm going to be sharing with you today because I've got some ideas for February library lessons. But I'm here because I want to help you make your library the center of your school. And February is a great month in schools. It's a great month for learning and lessons, but it's also a great month for special events and some really engaging lessons. It's one of my favorite um, months in the library or, or even in school in general. And so I wanna share with you three ideas for your library lessons this month. And hopefully you'll find something that is helpful to you. You can let me know. Um, if you try something, you can come back here and let me know in the comments. Let me share my screen. The first thing that I want to make sure you know about is this new elementary library newsletter that Lee Colazzo, Mrs. Reader Pants, started. And um, it's available now for February. Oh, ideas, 12 ideas for your elementary library. Wow. It's got lots of links to freebies, ideas, blog posts. There's a list of favorite read alouds for Black History Month, um, some resources and blog posts that might really help you. So I recommend if you are an elementary librarian that you make sure you take a look at this. All right, so that things that I'd like to share with you this for this month are lessons that are have some real world connections, a high level of engagement and some room for creativity. And the first thing that I want to talk to you about is I Love to Read Month. February is traditionally I Love to Read Month. You can celebrate any time during the month or all month long. Um, a lot of times I know people like to have an I Love to Read week with um, special things to do each day. And that's always lots of fun. But I like to start out with a fun bulletin board. And I like to make it interactive just with sticky notes and kids can recommend good books that they've read recently. Also teachers and staff members, you can invite family members too to come in and recommend their favorite books. You could set this up at a center, um, pretty easy. I've got a resource that has these sticky note templates in them that you can use, but you really don't need the template. You could use just fun sticky notes, colorful sticky notes and right away your bulletin board is interactive. Not only do the kids and the staff and the, and the family members, if you wish, get to interact by recommending their favorite book, but just watch, you'll have people coming through all month long looking for a recommendation for, for a book that they might like to read too. So it's a great way to celebrate reading in your school and pretty easy to do with that bulletin board. Um, uh, you could have a rate of book center, and that's really fun for all ages. You can see here in this picture that I use different levels depending on the age. You can use a really simple rate of book um, form for younger kids, your primary grades, and then maybe a little bit more involved for your upper grades. They can do an illustration on the back. That's pretty fun. Another fun thing to do is a bookmark exchange. My kids really, really enjoy this during I Love to Read Month. And we have exchanged bookmarks with classes in other schools. Just using the inner district mail, I connected with other librarians in my district and we matched up classes. You find a second grade class in another school for your second grade class to exchange with or same age or different ages. Um, and what I like to do, you, you could do anything for this, for a bookmark exchange. Kids could design their own bookmark from start to finish. You, you wouldn't need to have anything pre-printed. I like to have one side with um, a spot for kids to recommend a favorite book and to tell why they liked it. Because then when the student in another school or in another class within your school, you could do that too. When they get the bookmark, they might think about looking for that book too and reading it too. Um, another thing you could do is share something. If you've been doing research this month, which February is a great time for research, by the way, I'll talk about that in a minute. But if you have classes that have been doing research, maybe they could share three facts about a topic that they've been researching 
pretty easy to exchange and um, share um, ideas and enthusiasm for learning something new or reading a new book. Don't forget to make a good I Love to Read Month book display with books that are um, applicable for February or just books about reading, uh, libraries. Here I did um, President's Day, Valentine's Day. Sometimes Chinese New Year starts in February. Not so this year, but um, you could still have some Chinese New Year books out. And then here we have I Love to Read Week with some ideas. You can dress like your favorite character from a book. You can wear one day, you could wear... Um, you could wear a shirt with writing on it. And um, we called that wearable words, um, bring a favorite uh, book to school, that kind of thing. You can always do crazy sock day, poem in your pocket. Although sometimes we save that for April. Um, I do have this free, if you want to do a Valentine estimation jar, I have a free download um, in my TPT store for this jar of words. Estimation jars are always pretty popular in the library, um, kids love a chance to win something and they could, um, you could put the candy hearts in the jar and they could, can fill out their estimation. And then the person who gets closest can win the jar of candy, but they can also win maybe a free book. I always had a stash of books left over from the book fair. Um, so that's an idea. And then if you like these ideas, I do have a resource that just has kind of a mall, all of those things bundled together. The bulletin board, the book reviews, the I love to read week, um, the book display signs, that kind of thing. And I will link to this blog post because that's just kind of what I ran through here. And you can check it out yourself um, after this. So the next thing that is so fun to do in February with the Super Bowl coming up is a unit on advertising techniques. And this is so key for media literacy. Um, I'll tell you right up front that I usually did this with fourth and fifth grades, sometimes third grades, although there's nothing wrong with, with doing using this topic with younger kids. It just, the way that I structured the lesson, it was a little bit um, more geared toward older kids. But um, I don't know about you, in my school, football, the Super Bowl was really popular and exciting. Kids were wearing their jerseys um, leading up to the game from their favorite team. And um, our school would have, um, oh, the kids could vote for which team they thought was going to win and that kind of thing. There, there was always a lot of spirit going on. So it's a great time to look at television commercials and advertising techniques. I don't know about you, but I love to watch the Super Bowl, especially for the commercials. Don't get me wrong. I enjoy the football, but I really like the commercials too. And ever since I've been teaching this unit, I always like to keep track, keep a tally for the different techniques that are being used in the commercials. It's just kind of fun for me, even as an adult. But um, you can see here in this picture, I've got a slideshow that um, talks about uh, I think it's five different advertising techniques and gives an example of a commercial or an advertisement for each one. So the, the slideshow is linked to different videos, just really short, you know, short commercials that use the different techniques. So what I usually do the first week, you know, a couple of weeks before the Super Bowl is we learn about advertising techniques. I've got these handouts. I've got a note taking page where they kids can jot down ideas to remember, or there's kind of a cheat sheet there too that helps with that. And then what we do is watch commercials. This is a, a screenshot of an old commercial that we use, but it's still really fun. And um, they can work with a partner or on their own. We can watch the videos as a class. I've got a web page with links to about eight different commercials. Might be more than eight. I can't remember for sure. But um, and kids can work with a partner or we, you could do a whole group. But where they decide is it which technique is most prominent in these different um, commercials and, and they're from Super Bowls past, but they, there might be involvement, there might be association, there might be nostalgia, um, there might be humor. Um, 
and it's pretty fun. You, you get some good conversation. This is really important for kids because um, if you follow me, I've, I've sent an email about this and I have a blog post, but I had, when my son was in first grade, believe it or not, he wanted me to buy a vacuum, an Auric Excel. And I couldn't figure out why, because he did not help with chores. He, he was not that kind of kid. But he had seen a commercial where the Auric Excel lifted a nine pound bowling ball. And he wanted to, you know, try that. But it, that really drove home for me all those years ago. And he's a grown up now, but how influential advertising can be even on young children, even if it's not necessarily targeted to them. So this is a fun time to really talk about um, those, those things and those ideas that, that um, this is the art of persuasion and that um, to be aware of that so that they don't fall prey to um, advertising too much um, when they're, when they're older or even now. I like to give an at-home challenge, and um, this is a fun thing for families to talk about and do together, too, where, um, and this is just optional. You sh I, I don't require this. It's not like homework or anything, but um, anyone who brought back the at-home challenge from watching the Super Bowl and filling in which commercials um, fell into which categories, they would be entered into a drawing for a free book. And like I said, it's an important life skill. If you want to know more, you can come to this blog post, which I'll link in the comments, and then you can um, read the article and check out the resource that I have in my TPT store. All right. And the last thing I wanted to talk about that is really great to do in February is some research so I'm just going to scroll down. There's a lot of different things in this article, but um, President's Day research is pretty fun and pretty um, easy to do, scaffolded for all your grade levels. This project that you can see on the, on the screen is a project that I did with second and third grades. Those are bookmarks. But basically, you can... Um, Use your online databases, like maybe you have Pedal Go, Pebble Go, maybe you have World Book Kids. Um, oh, I can't, I'm blanking out on the other ones, but you know what I'm talking about, those online databases that your kids can use. Um, World Book Online for the older kids, Encyclopedia Britannica, um, and they can do some basic research on a president. Um, you can have cards where they can draw a name so that everybody's doing a different one so they can learn a little bit from one another. Um, you can do a, I, I like to create bookmarks like this so they get a little bit of um, technology practice with pasting in the pictures and paste um, using the text and kind of laying it out. I have a template that I use for that. Um, another project that I did with second and third grades is this, I'm not sure how well you can see this, but this is a flip, lift a flap, um, project that's pretty, pretty fun to do in PowerPoint or in Google slides. And the kids love it. Um, those can be hung on a bulletin board and that attracts lots and lots of, um, people to see what's going on with your, with your, um, with your research so they can, they can learn more, um, about different presidents. So I really recommend that. I, I did this for a couple of different years with my, with most of my students, most of my classes, um, the older kids, we did PowerPoint, um, simple PowerPoint presentations. They each had a different president and, um, I had a set of books from Abdo that were also, ebook so that we had the print book and the ebook and um, the fourth and fifth graders could either make a PowerPoint presentation or they could take their PowerPoint and print it out, make a little mini booklet. And then we shared them with the younger classes. Um, so anyway, I kind of ran on and on about different things here, my different ideas, but um, Really, I just wanted to give you some quick ideas because the month, the new month starts tomorrow and you can implement any of these ideas pretty easily on your own. I'm going to share links to the blog posts in the comments. So remember, 
Uh, don't forget about the elementary library newsletter with lots of freebies, great ideas, and links to helpful resources. And then um, I'll share a link to I Love to Read Month. You can do that all month long, or you can save it for later in the month. You could kick off your month with that too, though. Um, don't forget about media literacy and advertising techniques with the Super Bowl coming up. And last but not least, you could do some research. And I recommend doing research around the presidents because we have President's Day coming later this month. Kids love to learn about presidents too. It's just kind of one of those, one of those motivational topics. So I hope if you have a great idea for a February lesson that you share it in the comments, if you're watching the replay, be sure to drop any questions or comments here and I'll be coming back and checking. And I want to wish all of you a great February and take good care. Hope to see you again soon. Mm -hmm.